Hey everyone, it's the man with a capital M here. Now if you read my blog, uh, you'll remember that last week I posted an article that was called Yearning for uh, NATO Straps and Military Watches. And in that post, I described uh, my search for a watch that uh, did several things. So the ones I wear around every day um, are Rolexes. So I have a Rolex Datejust and a Submariner. And they're, they're great watches. I'm very fortunate to be able to have one. Uh, but there's just there are a couple things that uh, don't don't quite work for me with those watches, as great as they are. The first is that you can't really do much with them. I like to have a little bit of color and kind of play around with the things that I have. And uh, it's very hard to modify uh, those watches with different straps. For, for a couple reasons I outlined in the article, um, you know, part, part of it is I don't really want to put uh, an expensive watch around a, a canvas strap. The other one is just that uh, the watches are kind of made to go with the bracelets that they come with. So just not ideal for using uh, something colorful like a NATO strap, which you see right here. The other reason uh, I travel quite a bit for work and I just, I, I didn't feel comfortable taking something that expensive with me to some of the places that I go. So I, I wanted something that was cool looking that I could play around with, uh, but that didn't cost a fortune. Now having said that, I still did want a couple of uh, features that I'd gotten used to uh, on the Rolexes. Uh, the biggest one was an automatic movement. It had to have an automatic movement. Uh, which is t tough to find actually at the price point I was looking to, uh, to to buy at. Well, long story short, if you read the post, you'll know that the watch I ended up getting was uh, a Seiko, and it is the Seiko SNZ G15 J1. It is kind of a mouthful, but uh, it's just basically the model number, and uh, the J1 is very important. It actually designates the fact that it was uh, made in Japan. Now, it turns out that Seiko has uh, facilities all over the place in Asia, but uh, maybe it's just me being anal or just liking the cool factor, but I really wanted uh, the made in Japan version, and you can actually see on the dial here between eight and six is where it says made in Japan. And uh, if that's what you're looking for, you really need to be on the lookout for that J1. Uh, that, that's very important. Okay, so what is the watch actually, um, what does it do? Did it live up to my expectations? Well, the first thing is, is that maybe unsurprisingly, at this kind of price point, uh, it's very much a no frills package. So what I got was essentially this uh, Seiko box. I mean, really nothing fancy, just a cardboard box here. And then of course the uh, Seiko instructions and then the warranty. So nothing very fancy right out of the box. But uh, when you actually look at the watch itself, uh, it's definitely, definitely uh, a really cool piece. So one thing, if you read the article that uh, you know I wanted was the, the military look. I just think it goes really well with the NATO straps. And uh, you definitely get that with this watch. There's actually three different dials on which to tell the time. There's this outer band, which is just uh, stick markers, and that's where the, uh, the loom, the luminescent material, is found. There's also these regular uh, numerals here, and then on the inside, there's an inner ring that actually uh, gives the time to you in military time. So, uh, you know, hour zero up to uh, 24. The other thing that uh, is really cool on this watch is that it actually gives the day and the date. Now, that's surprising because if this were to be found on a Swiss watch, you'd be looking at paying thousands of dollars. In fact, Rolex actually has a model called the Day Date, uh, and just the base model in stainless steel will probably run you about $10,000. So very, very expensive uh, to buy on a Swiss watch, and uh, very surprising, actually, that uh, you find it on a, a watch at this price, which was $160. Now, if you're new to watches, uh, you may not know, but any automatic watch, you'll see that the second hand actually sweeps. It doesn't tick, and that's uh, the biggest giveaway that you're dealing with an automatic watch. It's just really fun to watch it sweep that way. So from the front, it's just a very good looking put together package. Now before I move to the back, I do want to touch on the NATO straps since that was one of the reasons I, uh, I bought this watch. This is not a factory strap. It did not come with the watch. Uh, the Seiko actually came with these black straps here. Now they're mounted differently from the NATO strap I have, I have on the watch currently. These actually fit uh, one piece at each end here. So they're mounted with what's called spring bars. They're just bars that exert force on both ends of the lugs and you need to take those spring bars out to remove the straps. So if you want to play with the NATO straps, you need to get yourself a spring bar tool, which I have right here. And you can kind of tell there's just a little bit of an indentation at the end. And so what you're going to do is you just thread that in 
to press the bars and uh, they should pop out. It's a little bit of a tedi tedious process. I won't go over it uh, fully, but you can YouTube that very easily. Anyways, once you've gotten that all set up, you can actually uh, start putting on your NATO straps. Now, as you can see, uh, it's basically just something that threads in to the watch. So it just slides right out, just like so. And it just goes to show you how easy it is to change these straps out uh, once you've gone ahead and and, uh, and removed the factory one. Straps are about 10 bucks each, extremely cheap. Uh, on this particular model, uh, the width from the uh, lugs is uh, 22 millimeters, so you wanna make sure that you're buying a 22 millimeter strap. But if you look at this one, it's just uh, one of a couple I actually ordered. And uh, it's just it's just fun, honestly. I mean, there's really no functional purpose to these. Uh, I just wanted something that I could you know play around with. I didn't just want stainless steel on my wrist. So with these straps, you know, I can kind of match it to what I'm wearing that day. And uh, it's just fun. I mean, again, no function, just purely fun. So going back to the watch now, if we turn it around, this is, I think, one of the coolest features of the watch. So mechanical watches, um, you know, they've been around for a while, but they're still just a really, really cool piece of technology in terms of how they're designed, how they're built. And uh, one feature that a lot of high-end watches have is um, a see-through case back. So you can actually look into the guts of the watch and see how it's working. Uh, if you've never seen it before, I definitely recommend doing it. It's just, uh, if you're in any way mechanically inclined, it's just really cool to see how these uh, how these little machines work basically uh, since that's what they are uh, not something that you see on uh, many lower end watches um, so definitely really really cool to see uh, on this particular Seiko which again only cost me hundred and sixty dollars now one thing I'll point out just for uh, you know just for everyone's information uh, a lot of the more expensive watches uh, are that way because the movement inside is, is very highly decorated. So this particular movement is probably a Seiko workhorse, meaning that they have the same kind of guts. They slap them in different watches and call it a day. It's very bland, not a lot of decorations, no engravings. Higher end watches uh, will actually have engravings on many of the pieces. You know, they'll put your name on there, they'll put custom designs. Um, all of that takes a lot of skill, it takes craftsmen. Uh, a lot of hours and time to do it. So it adds to the cost of the watch. Um, you know, not holding that against this particular one since I only paid $160 for it. But uh, just something to keep in mind if you ever go shopping for uh, other watches. You know, um, as far as how the watch functions, um, you'll read a, some reviews online and, and they'll say that, you know, it's inaccurate and it loses a couple seconds every day. And, and I have noticed a little bit of that, but honestly, f for the price that I'm paying, I, I really just can't. I can't hold that against this watch. Um, just to, to end this on a, on, a, on, I guess, a higher note, um, it really is just a great buy. I mean, fine, there's definitely a lot better out there, but for $160, uh, it's really pretty remarkable everything that Seiko's managed to, to get into this watch. So if you're in the market for something kind of fun, something that uh, won't kill you too much if uh, something were to happen to it, Something you just kind of wear around casually every day and customize a little bit with these NATO straps. Uh, highly, highly recommended. Um, the link to getting this particular watch is up at the blog, manwithacapitalm.com. Um, and obviously you can hit me up on Twitter if you have any more questions about how to, uh, to get this thing. But uh, for the price, highly, highly recommended.